the relationship between energy, frequency, and amplitude of a wave. Energy and Frequency. So as you can see, as we slowly increase the frequency, it's requiring more energy from that oscillator device on the left side there to spin around. That spinning around, that increasing energy is also increasing then the frequency here of this wave machine. But how do you find the energy of a wave using frequency? Well, you're gonna use the formula E equals H times F, where E is the energy, H is Planck's constant, and F equals the frequency. All right, so let's see what happens to the energy when we increase the frequency. I have a Google Sheet set up here because Google Sheets allows me to easily import the formula and it does all the calculations for me. And then I can create a graph to see the relationship between energy and frequency. So here I have energy, frequency, and I have Planck's constant. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the formula here. It is the frequency, so that's gonna be B3, multiply by Planck's constant, so that's C3. And that will be my energy. And I'm gonna have it do it for all of them. So let's go ahead and look at what does that actually look like on a graph? Because graphs are easier to see the relationship between two items, two um, substances. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight those two columns and have it create, a, not a column graph, but I want an actual line chart. And here we have the energy at the bottom and I have frequency on the side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a title. So as you can see here, frequency and energy have a directly proportional relationship. As one increases, so does the other. And they do so at a constant rate. And we know it's a constant rate because again, it is a straight diagonal line. Let's review. Energy and frequency have a directly proportional relationship and move at a constant rate, as seen here on a diagonal straight line. Now let's look at energy and amplitude. So as we increase the amplitude, notice how it takes more energy to bring that oscillator and make it go higher up. And as it's doing that, the amplitude is increasing as well. But how do you find the energy of a wave using amplitude? Well, we use the formula E is proportional to amplitude squared, where E is energy and A is amplitude. Again, I'm going to use Google Sheets to help me calculate this information because Google Sheets will then calculate it for me and I can then create a graph which will better help me understand the relationship between amplitude and energy. The formula that we use, we know that energy is proportional to the amplitude square. So we're talking about surfing waves here. For example, an amplitude of 12 meters would be like your big surfing waves in Hawaii, the 40 foot waves that they have sometimes on the North Shore there. And a one meter would be your basic learning beginner waves. Well, let's see how much energy is actually in those waves that those surfers are tackling. So if we go into energy here, the formula, again, it is energy is proportional to the amplitude square. So I'm gonna put in my amplitude, which in this case is A3, and I'm going to square that. And then I'm going to fill in the rest. This shows how the amplitude increases and how the energy is going to increase. So now I'm going to create a chart, a graph, to better show that and better represent that. And as we can see here, it is directly proportional as energy or amplitude increases, so does energy, but it's not at a constant rate like the one with energy and frequency. Instead, as amplitude increases, energy also increases, but it's increasing at amplitude square. 
So as we can see, as we increase the amplitude, the energy is increasing square to that amplitude here. So let's review. Energy and amplitude have a directly proportional relationship where energy increases proportional to the square of the amplitude. And you can see that in this curved line. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.